What? Hertz cuts it back the other way. What the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, what a so dumb play. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would they run that play? Oh, th this is I what I need. I don't understand the play calling. This is what Get I need. Get Swift in there. He's killing them. What is that bullshit? My God, they're such a stupid team. Stupid coaches. They're stupid. <laughs> they're stupid. I can't stand this coaching staff. I want him fired. Oh, he's going. He's he's getting closer to the edge. Nine. You take DeAndre Swift out of the game and you run two bullshit calls. Mm. Nick Sirianni sucks ass. <coughs> oh wow! It's just ridiculous. Oh wow! Philly five hundred melting be down. So stupid. Every week, stupidity. <laughs> I'm so sick of the dumbness. How can you be any dumber? Oh. How can you take DeAndre Swift out and then you run two plays like that? Oh. I mean, you, can't you can't afford to kick him in the You can't stop him on defense. You have to score touchdowns. You defense stinks. Oh. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boost Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody has had a great year. It's been um, a year with a lot of highs and lows for me. I've had to say goodbye to too many good friends, and that continued even this evening. Rest in peace, my friend Alex, um, a man who taught me a lot about being a contractor and even more about life and about how to be a man, how to be a man. And you will truly be missed. Um, I'm going to say that beyond the sadness of losing Rashid and other people this past year, like I said, my friend Alex, Going into 2024, I can't believe another year has gone by. And for our Dallas Cowboys, I have long said that I believe in karma. I believe you reap what you sow. A lot of people have the attitude that nice guys finish last. I don't believe that. I believe what you do is you treat people the way you want to be treated or the way you'd like to be treated. And that's the way I've always lived my life. And I believe that karma is a thing. Maybe it's just hopefulness or whatever. But I've always thought that the Jerry Jones, Jimmy Johnson, whole fiasco of Jerry Jones and his ego was the driver of things just not working out. And I had said that, you know, I thought that the perfect time for the Cowboys to have put Jimmy Johnson in the ring of honor was actually at halftime of the first San Francisco um, playoff game to get that extra emotion and things on there, but better late than never. But this has been strange when we look at this because, see, this is vindication for me. And I'm going to say, um, you know, people give me a hard way to go because I've always been one that's believed in Dak Prescott and believed in the Dallas Cowboys. I don't know. We could lose in the wild card round. I don't know. You know, it, it's football. Crazier things happen. For the Eagles to lose to the Cardinals is still, it, you, you still don't know how that happens. Because um, it's football. And on any given Sunday, you can either win or you can lose. But I feel like a couple of things that have been working in our favor. I, I still believe that there is a place after we leave here. And I believe that Rashid is right there. I'm sure Rashid is pissed off at Crosby for missing that field goal right now because I'm sure he would have loved to have had that victory. And I know that he would like to finish up the year with a victory over the Eagles. And that would be the icing on the cake. But for the Cowboys to be in this position where it doesn't make sense, Think about what I heard, and, and this is where I, I, I know I've lost uh, a lot of people that watch. That watch, 
I feel like I'm not going to – I know at least this next week I will not see very many Eagle fans, which make up a lot of my channel's views. That, that's okay. That's okay. I'm, I'll be all right because I know they're not going to be here because you don't understand how much – I have been trolled. I have been made fun of. How they told me, you know, Dak Trashcott, Dink, Cock, uh, uh, Dink Mascot, you know, Prescott, you know, um, Dink and Dunk Dak. Dak is a game manager. He's not a top 15 quarterback and so on. The Cowboys suck. Jerry Jones doesn't know what he's doing, that he's 7,000 years old, as Philly 500 says. And how good the Eagles are, that their front office has got it together, that they, they're running circles around the Cowboys, that Howie Roseman is the best, you know, front office guy in the NFL, that Jalen Hurts, you know, was an MVP candidate last year, and that, you know, he's going to take it to another level, and he's just going to be great. And he's so far better than Dak Prescott. You know, all the the trolls that would come in and put the greater than symbol you know towards Jalen Hurts and Dak Prescott is Kirk Cousins you know uh all of these things that I've gotten that the Eagles defense with Jalen Carter because they know how to draft and they drafted Jalen Carter and he's going to be an absolute beast that you know Jordan Davis that first round draft pick all of those guys that they had that they got N'Kobe Dean oh my god N'Kobe Dean he's going to be the best middle line Linebacker. He's going to be an all pro. He's going to lead the team in tackles. This defense, that how are you going to run against them? That the offensive line, best offensive line in football, that the Cowboys didn't have it. That the Eagles had the better quarterback than the Cowboys because Jalen Hurts is just a difference maker. They had the brother, uh, the Bush, the, the, the Bush, the, the Bush, tush, the, 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 the Butt push or the, 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 you know what I'm talking, the brotherly shove or the tush push or whatever the hell it is, that they had that unstoppable play. They had Nick Seriani, that arrogant SOB that was in your face, that new generation of coach that was so better than the antiquated Mike McCarthy that you had better receivers with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, that the tight end was so much better than what we had because we just had Jake from State Farm. No, Jake Ferguson. That we got rid of Zeke Elliott because Zeke Elliott was the guy, and we only had Tony Pollard. That our defense was, meh, you know, the defensive line. Can't stop the run. That literally on a weekly basis, we heard that Dak Prescott is nothing but a turnover machine and that he wasn't going to get re-signed, that the Cowboys would be better off letting, uh, cutting Dak, taking about a $39 million cap hit and trading for Matthew Stafford in the offseason. We've heard all of these things, and when you break it down and you look on paper and you see the Dallas Cowboys offense versus the offensive line versus the Eagles. The Eagles got a better one. You look at the tight end, they got a better one. You look at the wide receivers core. You look at that and say, you know, they got a better, you know, pound for pound full core, better than the Cowboys. That they had all of these things, and I have heard about it over and over and over again that the Cowboys stink. Cowboys are going to have to go on the road because they can't win on the road. And to be here on New Year's Eve with all the Cowboys have to do, it doesn't matter what the Eagles do, is win against a commander team that currently is sitting at the number two pick that's not going to have an incentive to want to win to change that. That's a franchise that's starting all over. It's almost unbelievable. It's almost like there's no way the Dallas Cowboys should be here. But I believe that this is karma. I want you to think back to when Jerry started talking about Jimmy going into the Ring of Honor. The things that have happened in that time period. One, Jimmy Johnson going into the Ring of Honor. Unfortunately, losing my good friend, Rashid, and you can see Rashid's back over here, up on there, the plaque, looking over my shoulder. It just doesn't make sense 
for an Eagle team that was 10 and 1 to now be 11 and 5. That they have gone 1 and 4 and that the team has literally imploded. A team that went wire to wire last year, leading the division, going to the Super Bowl, and was a fumble away from winning it to now all of a sudden look like the worst 11-win team in the history of football, where their defense, where they've got studs, or they had players that you looked at on paper and said, these guys are really good, but can't stop anybody. They could not stop Kyler Murray, who's only been out for a couple of games this season, and the Arizona Cardinals. It's almost crazy because all I've been hearing since the Cowboys lost to the Cardinals was the Cowboys lost to the Cardinals. How are you going to lose to those guys? We lost to them on the road, missing three Pro Bowl or All-Pro offensive linemen. I can at least say we've always had problems playing in Arizona. But to have that happen, for the Eagles week after week to have everything right there in front of them and not perform, and somehow the Dallas Cowboys have the opportunity for the number two pick, all I can say is it's got to be that the curse is lifted, that maybe, just maybe, that Jerry Jones finally taking a piece of humble pie and giving credit where credit is due, that now the Dallas Cowboys can finally move on, that the football gods up there that said this is a travesty because what you've done to one of our greatest, one of our people, that you will not get that chance again until you do right by me, until you do right by me, everything you touch is going to fail. Well, not everything failed. But as far as the Super Bowl, it has. Now, I don't know if this will be the moment or the impetus that leads the Dallas Cowboys to the Super Bowl. But you have to look at it from where we were a month ago. Where they said the chances of the Dallas Cowboys winning the division and getting that high seed were like 5% where you sit here and you look at Dak Prescott, who was constantly much maligned last year and through training camp, where they literally counted how many interceptions he had in practice, that Dak Prescott is leading the NFL in touchdowns, is second in like yardage, is like fourth in completion percentage. It doesn't make any sense how this happened the Dallas Cowboys didn't go out there and sign a whole bunch of free agents and studs out there like other teams did you looked and said teams are getting talent they're getting better the Cowboys believed in their own guys it makes no sense at all for the Dallas Cowboys to be the number two seed their draft this year did not help them. Mozzie Smith has been a blip on the radar. Schoonmaker, he gets in there from time to time, but it ain't making any difference in the team. Overshone blew his knee out. We've got nada, nothing, zero, zilch, zingo as far as impact from our special teams, other than our kicker, Albury. I, I, that, that's unbelievable. But it just doesn't make any sense at all how we are here. I have to say that this has to be divine intervention. It's got to be karma. It's got to be changing the narrative that in a season where everybody looks vulnerable, that from week to week you can look like a world beater and look like ass ass, as Shady McCoy would say. The Dallas Cowboys, I hope, I hope, 
I know they're in the locker room when the whole ceremony is going on. But I hope that they got a chance to meet Jimmy, to talk to Jimmy, and Jimmy to talk to them about greatness, about what it meant to be a Dallas Cowboy, about winning a Super Bowl, that they watch that ceremony that went on, that they take some of that in and want to become part of that greatness. They're going to get recognized because they're just them boys. But that's short-lived. That Super Bowl is Cowboys' immortality. You win that, they can never, ever take it away. And this needs to be the moment that those guys recognize that this is their chance to be part of all those greats up there. It still blows my mind away what has happened. There's no way, no how that the Eagles should be where they are. There's no way, no how that they should literally look like they know nothing about football over the course of the last five weeks. But somehow it does. Somehow their offensive line ain't stopping people. I mean, you know, not blocking people. Somehow their defensive front that used to be the strength is given up 200 yards on the ground. That their secondary gave up literally four straight drives to the Cardinals. None of this makes any sense to me. And... I love this feeling of hopefulness for the Dallas Cowboys going forward. And I'm praying because it's been too long. I have taken too much flack, too much crap from people. Not just Eagle fans or Giant fans or Washington fans or 49er fans. From my own Dallas Cowboy people. Finishing this year with this note is the best New Year's that I've ever felt. I know that sounds crazy because I've felt 58 of these mother humpers or 57 of them. This is 58. This changes everything. Let me say from the bottom of my heart. Thank everybody for being here, being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. I know Eagle fans, you're not going to be around to hear this, but I appreciate you guys too. And I hope that everybody, each and every one of you, has an incredible 2024 and that all your dreams come true. All I wanted for Christmas was to see the Eagles lose and win the division. And to keep that sexy, beautiful woman right there happy. Mm, 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 mm. Huh? Look at that. Looky. Looky here. Looky here. Anyway, Happy New Year's, everybody. And um, I appreciate y'all. One more time for good measure. Two. What? Hurts cuts it back the other way. What the fuck is that? Oh, what a so dumb play. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would they run that play? Oh, th- this is I what I need. I don't understand the play calling. This is what Get I need. Swift in there. He's killing them. What is that bullshit? My God, they're such a stupid team. Stupid coaches. They're stupid. They're stupid. <laughs> Stop it! I can't stand this coaching staff. I want him fired. Oh, he's going. He's he's getting closer to the Number edge. Nine. You take DeAndre Swift out of the game and you run two bullshit calls. Mm. 
Nick Sirianni sucks ass. <laughs> oh, wow. It's just ridiculous. Oh, wow. Philly 500 melting so down. Stupid. Every week, stupidity. <laughs> I'm so sick of the dumbness. How can you be any dumber? Oh. How can you take DeAndre Swift out? And then you run two plays like that. Oh. I mean, get down. You can't afford to kick field goals. You can't stop them on defense. You have to score touchdowns. You defense stinks. Oh. Uh.